Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we will be discussing some of the selective problems which are given at the end of uh, Craig's restorative dental materials. And I will be only discussing few selected problems that are relevant uh, at undergraduate level. So let's begin. Now, this is a problem, selective problem, which is given in properties of dental materials. The problem says an addition silicon impression was poured in high strength dental stone and it was difficult to reproduce the fine margins of the cavity preparation. What might have been the problem? So cavity prepare so cavity was prepared in a tooth and the impression was taken with addition silicon impression material and when the high strength dental stone was poured into the impression so that a cast could be made it was very difficult to reproduce the fine margins of cavity preparation so what could have gone wrong now the answer is that in all probability a hydrophobic addition silicone impression material was used and wetting of the surface by the mix of high strength stone was troublesome right uh, let's open Applied Dental Materials by McCabe and in the chapter of Impression Materials in Elastomers it says that the silicon elastomers are inherently hydrophobic in nature. So these impression materials are hydrophobic. They would repel water. It's a characteristic which can cause imperfections in impressions if the area to be recorded cannot be thoroughly dried. So if the oral cavity is not thoroughly dried uh, there would be blow holes in the impression. There would be holes in the impression because of the moist area, because of the moist oral cavity. So attempts have been made to overcome this problem by incorporation of surface active agents to make the material more hydrophilic, right? So in this problem, probably we know that we, we mix dental stone with water and thus that's a material uh, which contains water. And it would definitely cause problem when it would be poured in an impression material which would be hydrophobic, right? So they say that check the manufacturer's literature and it will probably not indicate that it is hydrophilic. So the one, the impression material that they used in this problem was probably hydrophobic. So manufacturers will specify that it is hydrophilic but not if it's hydrophobic. So check the packaging. If it's mentioned that it's hydrophilic, it means that that addition silicon has been modified and made and rendered hydrophilic. But if nothing is mentioned on the packaging, it means that it's hydrophobic. Now moving on to another example, to another problem. Um, the problem says how is it possible to use a single elastomeric impression material and yet to have correct viscosity for use in syringe and the tray, right? So now you know elastomeric impression materials include elastomers like polysulfides, polyethers, addition and condensation silicons. And they come in a variety of viscosities. Now how you can use a single viscosity of elastomeric impression material and you can use that single viscosity in a syringe as well as in a tray. You know that to use a material in a syringe it must have low viscosity and should be fluid enough to properly flow and to use a material in a tray it should have high viscosity so that it does not flow out of the tray now how can a single viscosity perform both actions well a correct compounding of the polymer and filler produces a material produces an impression material that has a quality described as shear thinning so few impression materials uh, have a property of shear thinning which is in other terms it can also be called as thixotropic or thixotropic behavior or pseudoplasticity in which the viscosity decreases when shear uh, rates are increased so what is shear thinning a decrease in viscosity the viscosity of material decreases and material becomes more flowable at higher shear rates so more stress is applied there's a decrease in the viscosity of material now when what are the situations in which there is higher shear rate during spatulation during syringing 
such a material decreases its viscosity at higher shear rates for example during spatulation or during syringing and has a higher viscosity at lower shear rates as when it is placed and used as a tray material so if you use a material in this if you use that material in a syringe it's and you obviously would press the syringe you would apply a pressure on the plunger it would flow out of the syringe because there's a higher shear rate and the viscosity is decreasing thus it would flow but when you would place the same material in a tray it would not flow out of the tray because there is very low shear rate you are not applying any external external pressure or stress on the material so its viscosity remains high this property is called shear thinning with a few differences it's also called as thixotropic behavior and it's also called as pseudoplasticity of a material there's a little bit detail given in philips science of dental materials let me let me first explain to you what is pseudoplasticity uh, the viscosity of many dental materials decreases with increasing strain rate until it reaches a nearly constant value that is the faster they are stirred forced through a syringe or squeezed the less viscous and more fluid they become this is called pseudoplastic viscosity or pseudoplastic behavior right now the viscosity of most fluids decreases rapidly with increasing temperature viscosity may also depend on previous deformation of liquid such fluids become even less viscous and more flowable upon repeated application of pressure and the they are termed as thixotropic so dental prophylaxis paste plaster of paris resin cements and some impression materials are thixotropic so these are few examples of thixotropic materials thixotropic nature of impression materials is beneficial because material does not flow out of the mandibular impression tray unless it is placed over a dental tissue and prophylaxis profi paste or prophylaxis paste does not flow out of a rubber cup until it is rotated against the teeth to be cleaned if these materials are stirred rapidly the viscosity is measured a value is obtained that is lower than the value for a sample that has been left undisturbed so the viscosity decreases when force or strain rate is increased okay so the next question next problem is regarding the property of hardness property of hardness if you wish to measure the surface hardness of a material that has uh, that had small isolated areas of widely varying hardnesses which hardness test would be most appropriate and why the answer is diamond pyramid hardness only the noob and diamond pyramid are appropriate for surface hardness and a wide range of hardness right the selection of diamond pyramid over noob hardness test is based on the information that there were isolated areas of different hardness and the diamond pyramid indentation can be placed in smaller areas choose nano indentation for study of microphases so uh, now whenever you are asked uh, what which type of hardness test you will be using if a material has isolated areas of varying hardnesses there are some areas which are less hard some are more hard which test you will perform just remember you'll be using no hardness test for uh, such a case forget the diamond pyramid at your level what's important is that you should know no hardness test will be used to uh, check the wide range of varying hardnesses of hardness of the material let us see the different let us just revise different types of hardness hardness tests there's a brinell hardness test wickers noobs noob and rockwell right these are the shape of indenters used again this is brinell which has basically indenter shaped in a form of a ball this is rockwell this is wicker or 136 pyramid 136 is basically the degree uh, of angulation of this diamond pyramid this diamond indenter and this is a noob the shape of a noob indenter so one last question one last problem why does a mesio occluso distal mod 
a cavity prepared for amalgam it fail why does it fail in tension when compressive biting force are applied from opposing teeth so there is a mod uh, cavity prepared and that has been filled with amalgam and when opposing masticatory forces are applied com compressing forces applied why does the restoration fail now the solution or the answer is a compressive load produces bending of mod amalgam so this is not sim a simple class 1 cavity in which there is just an occlusal box it basically involves mesial side of the tooth occlusal as well as distal right so when compressive stresses are produced when masticatory forces are applied on that kind of cavity or that kind of amalgam restoration there are multiple types of stresses being produced number 1 compressive stress is produced on the occlusal surface and tensile stresses are produced at the base of restoration now know that amalgam is a very brittle solid and it has a very low tensile strength compared to compressive strength so when tensile stress will be applied the amalgam would fracture and thus this restoration fails first at the base of restoration because there are tensile stress is being applied and the crack propagates towards the occlusal surface and finally the whole amalgam restoration fail restoration fails or fractures so this is the reason let me show you how a mesio occluso distal amalgam restoration looks like so this is an example of uh, mod mesio occluso distal this premolar which is the second premolar mesial surface is involved mesial half then the whole occlusal surface is involved and then the distal surface is involved as well is is involved as well so this is a mesio occluso distal amalgam restoration i hope you were able to understand the selected problems from the chapter of properties of dental materials zakala khai thank you so much